Despite all its impressive graphs and figures, the intergenerational report is a highly political document designed to shift the blame for our continuing budget problems onto Labor and anyone who objected to the spending cuts in last year's budget. It continues the budget's pretense that all our budget problems arise from overspending on health, education, pensions and the like, and none from all the tax concessions and loopholes being exploited by high income earners and big companies. Big name internet companies paying little or no tax in Australia, not part of the problem. Nobody knows what will happen to the budget and the economy over the next 40 years. Not the government and not even Treasury. The one thing we can be sure of is that they won't look like what this report says they will. Its projections are both quite mechanical and built on a host of assumptions, some of which will prove to have been realistic and some which will prove hopelessly astray. The projections take no account of any effects of climate change and assume away the ups and downs of the business cycle. Think of it, no booms or recessions for another 40 years. And no more cyclones, floods and bushfires than we've always had. Sure. The projections focus on the federal budget and ignore the state budgets. It's this that allows the government to claim that, had it been allowed to implement all its budget measures, the budget would be back into surplus for 35 years in a row. The trick is, one of the budget's biggest savings, which would grow every year forever, would have come from shifting a lot of the costs of hospitals and schools off the Fed's budget and onto the state's budget. That was never going to last. It's true, of course, that we will have to make some hard decisions in coming years to ensure the federal budget stays on track. What the pollies on both sides won't admit is the obvious. If we want more service from the government on health care and all the rest, we'll have to pay more tax.